When you're ready to cut out the pieces for this quilt or any other quilt, you can use a pair of shears like you would for general sewing, but you'll almost definitely get better results with a rotary cutter. So that's what we're talking about in this episode of How to Quilt. It's a simple matter when you are working with a pattern for a quilt to follow the cutting instructions. Draw using some sort of marking tool, a pen or a pencil or chalk. Draw directly on the wrong side of your fabric to the measurements that are required and then cut it out using your shears just like you would for general sewing. But because quilting very frequently calls for a lot of pieces in the same dimensions, it can be a lot more efficient and more accurate to use a rotary cutter. Not everybody who is new to quilting has ever experienced a rotary cutter before, so it's nice to take some time to talk about what it is and how it works. A rotary cutter requires three different pieces of equipment. The rotary cutter itself, a clear acrylic ruler in order to line up the pieces with your fabric, and a self-healing mat that's specifically made for working with a rotary cutter. There are self-healing mats out there that are made for X-Acto blades, but they aren't quite the same thing as the ones that are made for rotary cutters. Generally, if you don't own these supplies, you can go to the store and find a kit that will have a rotary cutter and a ruler and a self-healing mat. It doesn't have to be very big. You can certainly start with a 12 by 18 inch mat, a three by 18 inch ruler, and a standard size rotary cutter, and you'll be in great shape for making this quilt and a whole lot of more quilts moving forward. Rotary cutters do come in sizes, and there are lots of different brands and styles. All of them have a few features in common. First of all, the blade itself is a circular razor blade and it is super, super sharp. So all of them have a safety on them and that safety allows you to protect that very sharp razor blade. It's incredibly important that every time you store or are finished using your rotary cutter that you use that safety blade. This particular one actually has a safety button so that it's impossible to cut yourself with the blade. The style of rotary cutter you choose is completely up to you, but they also come in sizes. The sizes are related to the size of the blade itself because the blades are replaceable. You can purchase replacement blades in sets of one or three, just like that, and then change out the blade anytime it gets a nick or it gets dull or it's just not cutting as well as you want it to. The largest rotary blade on the market today is a 60 millimeter. Um, which is awesome if you're cutting a lot of thicknesses of fabric all at one time. The problem with cutting a lot of thicknesses of fabric is that the fabric itself kind of shifts over to one side, meaning that the more layers of fabric you cut at one time, the less accurate your results. I don't really recommend cutting more than four layers at a time, definitely not more than six layers at a time. Because once you do that, even if you have a thicker depth, like a, a larger blade allows you greater depth to cut, even when you have a large rotary blade, you really do run the risk of having some of your pieces accurate and some of them inaccurately cut. And we really want every piece to be cut as accurately as possible. That's the point of using the razor blade. Um, so my rotary cutter that I use the most is a 45 millimeter blade. Um, it's really common, very easy to find replacement blades for it, super easy to hold in your hand, not too heavy, not too unwieldy. Once you have the supplies that you need, the rotary cutter itself, the clear acrylic ruler so that you can line up the cuts that you want to make, and a self-healing mat that is pre-printed with a grid that matches the grid on your ruler, right, then you're ready to start cutting. If you are working outside of the United States with the metric system, you can certainly get a clear acrylic ruler that is printed with centimeters and a cutting mat that's also printed with centimeters. But I will forewarn you, if you're going to do a lot of quilting with American quilt patterns, I do suggest getting a clear acrylic ruler and a self-healing rotary cutting mat that are pre-printed in a one inch grid. And that's what I'm working with here is this one inch grid and a pre-printed ruler, or I'm sorry, a clear acrylic ruler that has the same one inch grid. So you can see, doo -doo -doo, it all lines up nice and easy. We're gonna practice good rotary cutting skills with this scrap here. You can tell that this piece of fabric that I'm working with is uneven. 
So I'm gonna use good skills to trim this down while you guys are watching, and um, with the goal that as you see me cutting this piece of fabric, we can talk through some of the, um, the best practices that go along with using a rotary cutter. All right, I'm right-handed, this is my dominant hand, and so I'm going to use my dominant hand with my rotary cutter, which means my non-dominant hand is going to be on the ruler itself. If you're a lefty, obviously everything's going to be reversed. With my non-dominant hand on the ruler, I'm always pushing down into the cutting mat. I'm gonna leave the safety on to demonstrate why. If I use my rotary blade, which goes right up against the edge of the ruler here, but I'm not pushing down with this hand, as I push across, you can see that my cut would no longer be accurate because the pressure of the blade would move the ruler across. Instead, what I wanna do is apply vertical pressure with this hand to push the ruler down into the mat, and then lateral pressure here. See, I've got one finger on the cutter, and the rest of them are gripped around the blade, right? And then I'm gonna push across so that I'm getting nice, clean cuts. The idea is that the edge of the ruler lines up with an inch mark in my cutting mat so that I can measure out the pieces as I'm cutting. For example, I wanna get rid of this rough, raw edge here and I'm just gonna clean it up, which means I can pick any mark on my ruler to line up with the nearest mark in the cutting mat. So it's matching here and it's matching here. I'm gonna push down, pull back my safety, and just cut across. Notice I put my safety back on as soon as I'm done, and you see that scrap pull away? So now I've got a nice clean cut. Let's say my goal is to have a six inch by eight inch cut. I know that this edge is nice and straight now, and so I'm gonna square off this next one. I can probably get, see, I've got my quarter inch mark here. Because this is a quilting product, not only is it a one inch grid, but it's in quarter inch increments, so I've got a quarter, a half, three quarters, full inch. You've also got eighths inch markings along these edges. So I'm gonna do my quarter inch line here because that is the closest main measurement marking to this uneven edge. And then I'm gonna hold my ruler down and cut. Notice that I'm always cutting away from the body, never ever toward. My fingers are not overlapping. Imagine what that would do. Brand new razor blade, right? No, we will not be doing that. So now I know that this is a perfectly square edge here and I can turn it again. And now, do you see how I'm taking these clean edges and I'm lining them up really neatly at the markings on my cutting mat, right? So let's say I want a six by eight piece, two, four, six, eight, and then some. So I know that going this direction, north to south, I've got that eight inches, which means going this direction, east to west, I can get my six. So I'm gonna line up one edge of my ruler here. It's a one, two, three, four, five, six inch ruler. I'm gonna line that up, press down, trim off the excess. And now I know that I'm square and it's six. Rotate again. Goes right back into that grid, nice and clean. Two, four, six, eight. So here's my line. Here's another thing you can do. I know this is six inches. I know this is my starting point. Six plus what is eight? Six plus one, two. So if this edge is on two, and this is another six, I know this line is eight. So I'm gonna push down, pull back my safety, run my blade, and there we go. Now I've got a perfectly square six by eight piece of fabric for whatever pattern I'm doing next. As you work through the patterns in the How to Quilt video series, you're going to be given measurements at the top of every pattern that tell you exactly how many pieces, at what measurements, from which fabrics, you're going to need to make that particular portion of the quilt design. As you work through, you can work in a couple of different ways. You can take each block pattern and cut just the fabric for that block pattern and then use those pieces to construct that portion and then move on to the next pattern. That's really how I prefer to work. So I have a stack of fabric like this, 
and I pull out the ones that are required in the pattern that I'm working on and I cut just the pieces for that. Which means that I end up with a lot of little pieces left over. Here's my suggestion if you choose to work in that way, especially if you're working with a rotary cutter. Every time you cut the pieces required for a particular pattern, save what's left. Just because you didn't use the whole strip of three and a half inches wide doesn't mean you toss it out. You might need it for a future pattern. Some quilt patterns are written so that you take a piece of fabric, you cut across the width of the fabric into a strip, and then you subcut it again. It's great that some patterns do that, and I find it very useful because you know exactly how to cut your fabric in order to maximize what you get out of the yardage in the pattern. I do want to caution you, not every pattern does that, and the ones that do generally have slightly less margin built in, so there's a little less fabric in that pattern for any errors you might make. When you may discover that you like a little more margin for error, the patterns in the How to Quilt series have plenty of margin built in so that if you make a mistake while you're cutting, it's not the end of the world. You don't have to immediately go out and buy more fabric. You almost definitely have enough from the fabric requirements list to make your pattern even if you make a few cutting mistakes along the way. Let's say though that I don't have some handy asymmetrical piece of fabric lying around, a scrap that I want to use, but instead I just bought yardage from the fabric store and I'm ready to cut the pieces for my quilt. What do I do? Okay, first thing is I take the end of the fabric and I go ahead and I press it up at the iron. I didn't press the whole piece. I actually only pressed a portion of it right here closest to the cut edge because I know that I don't have to cut all of it right now. I just have to cut some of it. Now I've got the selvage edge and I have laid the right hand selvage and the left hand selvage directly on top of one another. Because this is the machine edge that came out of the loom when the fabric was woven, I know it's straight up and down. So I'm going to use the selvage as my guide to keep my fabric on grain as I'm cutting. And then I'm going to lay my ruler down and I'm gonna cut a piece wider than what I need. So if my, my target, again, is a six by eight piece, I've got two thicknesses of fabric here, I'm gonna give myself some margin because I know that those edges are uneven. And I'm going to cut on whatever inch mark gives me the margin I'm looking for. Again, pressing down all the way across the width of my fabric. So you might see W-O-F, width of fabric, written on your instructions. And that just means I've taken this piece and I've given myself enough going from selvage to selvage all the way across the width of my fabric. Since I know that this edge is perfectly straight because I just cut it, I can now fold to four thicknesses. With those four thicknesses, which again, four is the maximum number of thicknesses that I recommend cutting with a rotary cutter, I've lined those up with any inch mark on my cutting mat. I take my clear acrylic ruler. I'm going to lay it on top in a way where I know I'm going to cut off. See these little dots? Again, those are from the loom. I'm going to cut those off. So I'm using this three-quarter inch line here. I'm going to push down, slowly and patiently cut off those edges. So now these edges are square. I can turn this again line it up in a quarter, and again, I am cutting four pieces all at the same time. If my target measurement is six inches by eight inches, this line in my ruler, which is an arbitrary line, is aligned with this edge. The edge of my ruler is aligned with this edge. Vertical pressure going down, safety off, cut my fabric, that's three sides. Rotate again, Line everything up right there in the corner. And again, six inches plus one, two inches. Squared up again. So I get nice, neat results. Press down, cut, save. We always save our scraps just in case we need them later. So now I have one, two, <laughs> three, four perfectly cut six inch by eight inch pieces, all using my rotary cutter.